Around the world, we see great work happening to improve children's education through edtech, but we don't typically see education technology actually scaling. Here are eight reasons why we found that's the case. Firstly, there just isn't enough robust evidence about what does and doesn't work in edtech, especially in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. Where there is evidence, there's a gap between what's known and what's happening in practice. In sectors that have led the charge in digital transformation, like entertainment and finance, there's a much narrower gap between this theory and practice. Even though private sector edtech is growing fast and attracting investment globally, the same isn't true within government-run education departments. Here, budgets are continuously stretched, especially through and since the COVID pandemic. The private sector and marginalized learners can feel like oil and water. Private sector innovation tends to customer-facing revenue models, which by definition exclude the poorest. EdTech is still often about products rather than problems. Instead of asking, how might we add tech to education, we should be asking, how might we educate in a tech-enabled world? There just isn't a silver bullet. You can't just design an EdTech product, give it to a group of people and say, job done. EdTech is best thought of as a service that unfolds over time and takes policy, pedagogy and business model into consideration. Funding and support for EdTech is often focused on early stage ideas instead of those ready to explore growth and reach more users. The education sector is fragmented, with government, private sector and NGOs all playing a role, with time-strapped government at the centre of this mix. At times, EdTech isn't dealt with by the education department at all. At the EdTech Hub, we run sandboxes to tackle these issues and rethink implementation. Visit edtechhub.org forward slash sandboxes to find out more and join the conversation.